Welcome back to another Minecraft update video. It is Snapshot 19W36A and this comes with some absolutely massive news. As well as that, there are also changes to the bees and some new features migrated from other versions of the Minecraft game that we're going to discuss in this video. But first of all, what is this big chunk of text right here about? In an effort to help make modding the game easier, we have decided to publish our game obfuscation maps with all future releases of the game starting today. This means that anyone who is interested may deobfuscate the game and find their way around the code without needing to spend a few months figuring out what's what. It's our hope that the mod authors and mod framework authors use these files to augment their updating process that they have today. These mappings will always be available instantly and immediately as part of every new released version. This does not however change the existing restrictions on what you may or may not do with our game code or assets. So what on earth does all of that mean and what does it have to do with modding? Well let's first of all start off with an analogy. Let's pretend that the Minecraft game is like a car. You can jump inside it, turn on the engine and start driving but when you lift up the hood chances are you're not really going to know what's going on. And the way that you could learn what's going on under the hood is by having access to the manual that tells you what all the things are that are going on. And this is what Mojang have done today. They've given us the manual to the game so we can look on the inside and see exactly what's going on. So here is some obfuscated code and then here is some deobfuscated code. And if we put them side by side, you may not be able to read code, but you can see on the left there's a bunch of jumbled red letters that don't really mean too much. And on the right it says things like trade offer and need restock, which pretty much tells you what part of the game code you're looking at. So this means that coders who want to tinker with the game will be able to see what the game is actually doing straight away rather than having to spend time figuring it all out. And so what we should see is more availability of mods being brought up to the latest versions of the game. Things like Forge and Spigot being updated a lot quicker than usual. I think this is a fantastic move by Mojang and it's really going to help the modded community. Now before we get into the cool new features and game rules that have been added in this update, we're going to check out the changes related to the bees, as this is the bees update, the bugs and the bees as I call it. So first of all, if we were to just hit a regular bee, a freshly spawned one with a diamond sword, you can see it doesn't kill it. And then if I hit it with this enchanted sword, it kills it in one hit. And that's because it's got Bane of Arthropods, which previously worked on spiders, but now it's going to work on the bees as well. So this enchantment is slightly more useful if you feel like killing a bunch of innocent bees. Now here's a bug that many people thought was a feature. If you're holding a flower in your offhand or even just in your main hand and you attack a bee, it would become hostile at you, but it wouldn't actually attack you. This has been considered a bug, so you can see even though I'm holding a flower, it still attacked me. And now all the bees are attacking me. These bees were also attempting to attack the player after they had lost their stinger in the back, which I once called a tail, and then I got a million comments about it. That's no longer going to happen. They're only going to attack you the once. There was a bug that could cause leash bees going inside of a bee's nest to duplicate the lead and that will no longer be possible. I'm having trouble replicating this next bug but I can kind of show you it by using a bee with no AI. So some of you may have noticed that the bees can tend to freeze if you just stand still in your world. So after a certain amount of time your bee will be flying around and then it will just freeze. It's a strange bug and it's been removed. We should see no more of that. Bees can also suffocate when a block is above them. If I place a few here, it is possible to see one fly upwards. There you go, that one took damage. So if they fly into a space with a block directly above, they can indeed take damage, which is kind of strange, and it's been removed. I showed this bug in the last video. This hive right here doesn't have any honey inside of it. It's got a honey level of zero, yet with a dispenser you could get honey bottles from it. That will no longer be the case. Now there is also a change to the honey bottle. You can consume it when you have full hunger, that is still possible, but the amount of saturation that it provides has been diminished. By what amount, I'm not sure. I think it previously filled up a full hunger bar, so each type of food that you eat also has a saturation meter as well. As you can see, this cooked mutton will heal some hunger haunches, but also some saturation as well. And now the honey bottle has unfortunately been nerfed. It's not as powerful as it once was with the saturation. So let's take a look at the parity features next. This means things that are consistent across multiple versions of the game. As you can see right here, things from other editions of Minecraft are now arriving at Java edition. 
The first one of which needs no explanation for its usefulness. When we have a bed and we right click on it, you can see it tells us you can only sleep at night and during thunderstorms. It is a real pain to wait for night to come around to set your spawn, but now actually our spawn has been set. So if I go ahead and kill myself right here, you'll see that we respawn next to the bed. Now I do think that they need to update this so the text tells you that you've set your spawn as well, but that's how it's going to work. So if we go ahead and break this bed and do that one more time, you'll see that this time we go back to the world spawn because our bed was removed. Bells can now be rung if powered by a redstone signal. Let's put down a lever over here. Yep, and if you use an observer clock, this is very easy to abuse and then irritate your friends. <laughs> that is a horrible sound. So the infamous phantom mob appears at the night time if the player hasn't slept for long enough and these divide opinions. Some people like them, some people don't. There's now a game rule to stop them spawning. That is game rule do insomnia. If you set this to true, then phantoms won't be able to naturally spawn during the night time. As you would have seen a moment ago, when the player dies, they have this respawn screen. This also gives you the option to leave the game, and this can be a problem for map makers who are dealing with deaths in minigames. So now there is a new game rule, which I believe is on the Bedrock Edition, which is do immediate respawn. So if we set that to true, and then we kill ourselves again, you're going to see that we simply immediately respawn, just like that. Let's actually move away from that position. And you can see there's no screen, you just immediately respawn. As you're learning, lots of these features are game rules. We've got another free right here, all related to damage. And it's only free damage types that have been selected. We have drowning, we have full damage, and we have fire damage. So we're going to set all of these to false. And then we're going to apply these different types of damage to us in survival mode. So first of all, the fire. You can see I can literally walk into it and be on fire as well and uh, taking no damage over here, which feels very peculiar. Now I've added some lava over here. Yeah, and look at that. You can take damage from lava, but not from the fire effect when you get set on fire. Very interesting. What about if we use a flame bow? Yeah, look at that. The arrow does damage to me, but the fire doesn't. There's certainly other types of damage that need investigating. I think I'll save that for myth busting. Over here, we can teleport ourselves up into the sky. Over and over again, you see we're not taking any full damage. And then there's drowning damage. As you can see here, the bubbles have slowly disappeared, but once they're all gone, we're not suffocating, as you might expect, because that's what the game rule's about. Here is a suggestion I've seen many a time over the years. We're obviously in the nether, and we've got a whole bunch of wet sponges. When we place them down, we get some particle effects as the heat of the nether dries them out and turns them into a regular sponge. This I think will be really great. Take a quick trip into the nether, place down your blocks, pick them back up again, and that's a cool way to dry your sponges out. And our last parity feature is seriously cool. It's firework rockets and dispensers, and being able to shoot them in the direction that it's facing. Look at that, some creeper faces, wow. Looking seriously cool. So yes, they will now get shot in the direction rather than going straight up. This also works going downwards as well, which is really cool. And of course, it still works going upwards, as you would expect. There is also a technique that I believe DocM has been exploiting on the Hermitcraft server, where you can overload an entire chunk and then cause it to reset. So you could go into a chunk, do some building, exploit the game, and then that chunk would get reset back to its normal state. That should no longer be possible. When creating a new world, it was possible to go into this menu, make a selection, come back to this screen, and you can see despite not having a world name, you can create a new world. So that was everything I thought worth talking about in this snapshot. Of course, make sure you subscribe to find out about future ones, and if you want to leave this video a like, it will support the channel, and I thank you for doing that. Also, if you head down to the comments below, you'll find a link to my new channel known as Asuma Says. If you want to head over there and check it out, then there'll be a link in the comment box. That's it from me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.